is Carlton Cartwright, and I am the executive director for um, Veterans Memorial and Multicultural Histories Incorporated. And today is June the 13th, it's Sunday, 2021. And we are at the home of, sir, what is your name? In Germany, Jamel Dixon. Okay. And Mr. Dixon, when is your birthday? July 1st, 1972. Okay, and um, it's just you and I here at the interview at your, your home. What is the address here? 2440 Southwest 84th Terrace, Miramar, Florida 33025. Okay, and um, what branch of the service were you in? United States Marine Corps. Okay, you in, okay. Um, and what was your rank when you separated? I was an E4, a corporal. Uh huh. And when you separated? Uh, uh, July 25, 1999. And where were you when you separated? I was in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. In Marietta. Okay. Were you were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Where were you living at the time? You said Georgia. Yes, sir. Atlanta. Yes, sir. Okay. And so, what were you doing before you went into service? Uh, before I went into the service, I was in college at Savannah State College. And you, did you finish college before you went in the military? No, sir. You did not. What, what were you majoring in? I majored in biology. Okay. So right. I went into the Marine Corps uh, when I was going to my sophomore year of college. Okay. And so, um, I'm just curious, why did you, why did you leave college to go into the military? Uh, I mean, I ended up staying in the Marine Corps. I went in initially to do the reserve, and I ended up doing uh, my time with the reserves as well as finishing college as well. Uh, the goal was to get uh, military time while I was still in school. And then once I graduated college, my goal was to go back and become a Marine Corps officer. Right. Uh, and then, you know, I would already have time and grade as well as an opportunity to say that I was uh, in the enlisted ranks so that it would give me a better opportunity to communicate uh, better with the uh, troops uh, during my time as an officer. Uh, but upon finishing college, I uh, decided to go a different route. Why did you choose that branch? I just felt that it was the best. Uh, my uncle was in the Army for uh, 30 years, and for me, I just felt that the Marine Corps was something that was the toughest and the hardest, and I felt that I just wanted the biggest challenge. And uh, for me, I just felt that, you know, I, met, you know, I I'm sort of fit with that belief of the few, the proud. Okay. So I felt that I was somebody that could handle the challenges of being in the Corps. Um, do you recall your first days? Where did you go to boot camp? boot camp? Paris Island, South Carolina. Okay, and how long was boot camp? Uh, 13 weeks, uh, long 13 weeks, <laughs> uh, which is longer than any other branch. Uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was his own interesting reality. Uh, I was in 3rd Battalion. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I still actually keep in touch with uh, some of some of the people that I went to boot camp with. Uh, so that's, you know, been a blessing for me. Uh, you know, and, you know, it's uh, one of those things where you look up and the years go by so fast mm -hmm. that, you know, you still laugh about the boot camp days. Right. Uh, but it definitely had its own uh, interesting reality. You never forget it, huh? No, sir. Tell me about your instructors. Well, my drill instructors were... Uh, Special. Uh, <laughs> they were very special. Uh, and I still specifically remember Sergeant Rodriguez. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Why, why is that? Well, you know, he had a special way of communicating. Uh, and if, you know, anybody was in the Marine Corps, they know the special communication you get uh, from the person that's usually not the head drill instructor. Okay. Uh, so, you know, that was... Um, what does that mean? Well, usually the, the head drill instructor is more like, I don't know, the, the calming spirit per se. Uh, at least that's what it seems like. Uh, until, you know, 
he released <laughs> the troops. So, you know, it was, uh, it was its own interesting reality. But uh, the one thing is when you initially go in, right. you have a number of uh, misconceptions okay. of what you really understand uh -huh. until you're there. And then you, you finish. Uh, but once you finish boot camp and you are really out, everything that you go through, you start to realize the purpose and the understanding of having that level of pressure. Um, you know, I have been able to survive in the real world uh, much more effectively due to the challenges and the stresses that you go through being in the Marine Corps, specifically boot camp and other things, because it teaches you a level of discipline uh, that I don't believe anybody else can, can gain. Uh, and we are built differently. Uh, you know, I know people call us jawheads and they have their own kind of perspectives of things. Uh, but I think that when it comes to having to deal with real pressure and real stress situations, uh, we have been trained to deal with things a lot differently, uh, which allows us to be a little more effective uh, when those pressure moments come. And through my career, uh, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to manage stress in life a lot differently and it's allowed me to stay forward thinking and continue to push forward uh, and in many cases as an african-american male uh, i've been in situations where i've usually been the only management or administration person and when you're in that position you have a lot of pressure because you're trying to maintain a standard because you have a standard that you want people to understand that you represent a very positive and strong and solid foundation of a people and you want others to understand that you can handle whatever adversities or things come uh, come but yet you can yet pull people up uh, so that it opens doors and opportunities for others uh, and for me I've been very fortunate that through my career I've been able to sustain and continue to move forward so I have nothing but great respect for all of the challenges and stresses that I went through in the court uh, because those things have, a, have helped define and build a character that I have today. Uh, and I believe that if you speak to other Marines, even though they might have gone through specific things through their career and life, the Marine Corps has been a valiant help to me. Right. Uh, and I believe that they will probably feel the same. Uh, it allows you to pull through the murk and see life a little clearer uh, and be able to help keep on some defined lines on what you ultimately know you need to achieve. And uh, being the best uh, has always been a, a trademark of what the Marine Corps stands for and I have always had that same passion and drive even to this day. So for me, it, it has always been a blessing. You said boot camp was 13 weeks? Yes, sir. Okay. and. Did you go on leave at all while you were in boot camp? No, sir. No, not at all? No, sir. Okay, we, so... We, we went on leave after boot camp. After boot camp. Uh, they gave us, uh, I believe, uh, like a, you know, a week, 72 hours uh, to come visit our family, and then we had to go back uh, because we had to go to combat training. Right, okay. So you went home. For how long? A week, you said? Might have been about a week. Okay, okay. might have, okay. Uh, just, you know, because once we graduated, we had an opportunity to go home, visit our family, and then we went right back because we went to Camp Johnson to combat training. Right, and so, um, where, um, where did you go for combat training? Uh, Camp Johnson. Okay, and where, what state is that in? North Carolina. And how long did that last? Uh, that was about a month, I believe, if I can re remember correctly. 30 days, combat training? Yes, sir. Uh, how many people were in, a, uh, like, your unit? Uh, man. Um, how many people were in your unit in basic training? I, I forgot to ask you. Uh, in, my, in my boot camp unit, uh, it was probably about 30 of us, 30 right. of us in, in, my, in my unit group. 30? Yes, sir. Okay, and in, uh, 
In combat, how many? About the same? Oh, man. You talking about more or less that, yes, sir. 30 again. Yes. So what did that comprise of? What was combat training all about? Where did you start? Where did you stop? What was in between? Uh, and were there any casualties? No, sir. I mean, combat training was specifically based on trying to prepare us to understand how to deal with uh, the regimental realities of preparing for situations uh, if it came down to going into any kind of combat situation. Uh, it also allowed us to build uh, better unity uh, amongst the troops when it came down to you know defensive tactics and other things. So it was um, just I guess one of those kinds of opportunities that provided us additional uh, developmental training uh, towards being prepared for any kind of regimental activities that we would have to do uh, if it came down to deployment. So you you sound like it, and I mean, it's not its not a joke, but it sounds like you were pretty big on camaraderie. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, uh, the one thing you, you learn from being in the Marine Corps, uh, regardless of anything you've done, is teamwork is essential. Uh, and if you're not able to sustain and develop the appropriate team, it's very difficult to be effective, uh, specifically when you have situations that are much greater than an individual can carry. Uh, you need that dedicated team uh, that can always have your back and you all are working uh, in one accord in order to be effective. And for me, that was something that I still to this day uh, live by. And that's making sure that it's always about the team uh, and that no man is left behind. Uh, it's something that we've always prided ourselves on as a Marine. And for me, even at work, it's all about making sure we bring out the best in every person that's on the team. Gotcha. Uh, so for me, even looking at the work environment uh, that I'm in now, um, everyone from the janitor or environmental services on up mm -hmm. is essential to the success of that team. And everyone has the same level of respect. Uh, it's no, you know, because you do this position, you're not as good as the next person. Every position is essential. And if you don't show that same level of respect for everyone, then you never get the greatest outcomes. Gotcha. Um, so did you say how long combat training was? How long was it? Uh, it's like 30 days. Okay, and just can you give me specifically what the process with the regimentation consisted of over that 30 day period? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of it was based on uh, different hand-to-hand -hand combat skills, uh, a number of uh, you won't, we, call, we call it humps, uh, but it's more like unit marches, uh, you know, battalion marches where you actually go on 15, 20 mile humps uh, with full gear and combat activities uh, in order to develop you to prepare you so that in the case of something that was really a tactical scenario that would come up, you would be able to be prepared to manage in that type of environment. Um, as well as there were different combat skills, games, and different things, and they were all based on trying to develop the unity amongst the troops mm -hmm. in order to know how important it is to work succinctly together as a team. Right. Uh, so for me, it was, uh, it was that type of thing. Uh, you know, and you know, living in the, in the field and doing a lot of field um, outdoor living and all these things were based on trying to get you to understand how your survival abilities uh, are yet sustained even in that type of environment uh, and understanding that you can still be just as successful uh, and I think that because of that focus and that type of uh, training uh, it sort of was able to just continue to pull everyone in much better uh, as we moved away from the boot camp reality, we started going into another different uh, discipline of support. So, okay. So at the end of the 30 days, um, and, and how were the instructors in combat training? Uh, it was definitely different than boot camp. Uh, you know, they were still obviously directive, uh, but those things are just with any military branch. Mm -hmm. uh, we run on 
discipline and dedication and structure. Uh, so the structure of that is definitely much different than it is in a boot camp environment. Uh, but you still had, obviously, to stay uh, directed and, and focused on what the actual goals and missions are doing those trainings. Right. Um, you know, so after you do those trainings, then you go and you head out to your MOS or your military occupational skill that you'll do uh, when you're out in the real uh, military day-to-day -day operations life. Speaking of which, what was your third duty station? Uh, well, from there I went to Camp Lejeune. In? North Carolina as well. Okay. Uh, did you did you um, get any r and &R while you were in combat training? Did you? Any, no. any passes on the weekend? Nothing like that. Okay. Man. <laughs> so that, you, that was, you know, that was, it was its own entitled reality just right. within that. Got it. Uh, but once, you know, that was over, uh, you, you get to be sort of like, the regular military day-to-day -day kind of lifestyle. Uh, but you do go on to your MOS training. And I had two different MOSs when I was in the Marine Corps. What were they? Uh, my first MOS was 3381. And where'd you is, go for that? Uh, that, I believe, was still in Camp Johnson, okay. if I can remember correctly. Uh, but then... That, I apologize, and what was it? Uh, well, that was a food service specialist. Okay. Uh, I did that for, I believe I did that for like two or three years in the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. uh, so that was, that was great. I mean, I, I learned a lot. Uh, I actually received a Navy Achievement Medal. Where were you stationed doing that? Uh, I was stationed in Marietta. In Georgia? Yes, sir. Okay. After I finished uh, my, my, uh, my training. Right. Uh, my unit was in, in Marietta, Georgia. Okay. Uh, so during that time when I finished obviously my my MOS school I uh, went back to my unit uh, there we did different things and trainings and things of that nature but we had a a um, I guess a field service regiment kind of uh, deployment alert training uh, thing that we had and our unit uh, was set up to do this and they had you know Colonels and different people that came in town for our our training. Mm -hmm. uh, when we did this uh, exercise, uh, we ended up creating a field service kitchen, and we had you know a field service kitchen where we were able to feed the full unit and the battalion and all that. And because of how well we were able to ex you know execute that uh, that mission that exercise. Uh, with the full service kitchen, outdoor unit, the full everything, we actually end up getting honored with a Navy Achievement Medal. Congratulations. So that was uh, wow. something that I was very proud, proud of, of uh, because, you know, it's interesting when you talk about being in a food service type uh, military occupation, you never notice how much work goes into doing it until you realize that you're up 24 hours in those kind of, in those kind of environments uh -huh. uh, where other people might have time to sleep. Right. One thing about life, everybody got to eat. Yeah. And you are responsible to make sure everybody's fed so they can be strong enough to maintain their activities doing whatever thing is happening. So that right there uh, was, was, was great. I mean, you learned a lot. I mean, you learn how to deal with a lot of things. Uh, but... Even in that, uh, you realize just how important it is uh, when it comes down to the cleanliness and, and all these things that you seem like you become a perfectionist at because in that environment, things have to be so on top of things because of the environment of the kitchen and all of this that you, you, you become like, I don't know, like you have OCD, like everything you do got to be extremely clean and right. neat and you just become just that kind of person. Uh, all the time, um, but then my second MOS, uh, which was uh, was uh, uh, thirty one twelve, uh, which was transportation management specialist, mm -hmm. uh, and we actually uh, did a lot of the transportation uh, jobs where it came to uh, shipping, s supporting shipping and receiving, and things of that nature. So we drove like the Hummers and the five tons, and we helped uh, do shipments and things like that. So. 
um, we ended up actually going to Norway. I was, went to Norway uh, for a, uh, I guess, a, a duty activity, and we were in Norway, and we were actually helping ship back fuel hoses and things from um, from Desert Storm and things that was, you know, packed up in like the mountain areas. So that was a, uh, uh, you know, a great experience uh, that I had, uh, and the culture and learning something different. That was a, a real, real. Uh, nice experience. So, for the transportation MOS, where were you stationed? In Europe, more? Well, I was still stationed in the U.S. Okay, uh, but you took a TDY and went to yes, sir, Scandinavia. Well, in to Norway. I was in Oslo. Yeah, right. Yes, sir. Okay. And um, how long was that? I was there. I believe it was there like a couple of months. Okay. So that was that was uh, something that I enjoyed. I mean, it was a great opportunity to get away, learn some culture, obviously work with the team, and uh, and we went there and, and came back. And of course, at that time, I was coming back so I could you know still do my things in college, uh, because again, my ultimate goal was to finish college. Uh, be able to have developed time as an enlisted Marine right. so that I could be able to be a much more effective officer uh, when I tried to go into OCS. Okay. So, all right. So, all right. What, what year did you go into service? I went into the Marine Corps in August 25, 1991. All right. So, that's 91. You did that first tour with food service. Yes, sir. Right. And how long was that tour? I dealt with food service probably about three years so, of my time in the Marine Corps. So in about 94, 95 when yes, you sir. switched over to transportation? Yes, sir. And then and I, I finished that all until 98. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you stay in the system another year because you're an inactive military person until you actually get to your cutoff date and then they actually discharge you, uh, which my honorable discharge certificate in is July 25th, 1999. So you did just under 10 years? Uh, just under eight years. I was seven years, 11 months, and some days. Okay. So, you know, when I look at records I've seen, it's like seven years, 11 months, and I can't remember the amount of days. Right. Um, do you remember anybody, any casualties? Did you, you got hurt while you were in the military? I did, uh, but it was not in combat per se. Okay. Um, it was in training. Right. Uh, but it's, it's all valid. Um, that's why I also asked about anybody else that you know of, or that you can remember any other casualties. Not only you. Uh, at the moment, I can't recall. Okay. Well, during the conversation, if you remember then fine. But yes, what happened sir. to you physically? Uh, actually, I, I messed up my knees. Uh, and uh, once I did that, I, you know, had rehab and different things. And actually, my, my time pretty much got better. And I just went ahead and did like most people, just fought through it and just continue to serve out my time. Okay. So you didn't file your dis disability claim until, until recently. after the service. Oh, well correct. after the service. Right. I mean, I, I waited because I wanted to try to go back into the military uh -huh. uh, because I knew I could go back and finish up uh, the last 12 years uh -huh. uh, of my military time so I could have completed my 20 years. Uh, that was my goal uh, because I know that it was something that I believe I could have accomplished. Uh, but unfortunately, once I went back through the MEPS process, uh -huh. uh, they disqualified me because of my knee. Oh, really? Uh, and said that. No good? Uh, no, sir. Wow. I passed everything else, right. uh, the vision, the different things, but they uh, said my knee. Are they going to make it? No, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, what other places did you travel besides the ones that you mentioned while you were in the service? Why you want active duty? Uh, well, those were my main time, main units, okay. uh, and that was my main station areas. Uh, again, my ending area was in Marietta, Georgia, which was you know the headquarters uh, with was the fourth 
fourth division there mm -hmm. in uh, Marietta, Georgia. So that's where I was into that. Okay. Did you attend any college while you were in the service? Yes, sir. Oh, you did? Yes, sir. Did you finish? Yes, sir. Oh, you did? And uh, where, where did you, what, what, what university were you, were you, did you do that through? What affiliation? Uh, I started out, my first year of college was at Savannah State College. But that was before you went into service? That was before. Okay, at the ahead. end of that mm -hmm. year, because on the campus they had Naval ROTC programs. Uh -huh. Uh, and my goal was to find a better opportunity to go into the military. And once I had spoke to recruiters and different things, uh, obviously the Marine Corps was where I wanted to go. And they explained to me about serving in the Marine Corps, doing a reserve time, and you still would have the opportunity to go to college. And once you finish college, it would give you the opportunity to have gained enlisted experience so that you would be a much more inclined and better um, understanding officer because you would understand the ranks of enlisted uh, military veterans. So you would be able to go in and you would be able to handle dealing with being an officer in a different light right. because you would understand how to deal with people being enlisted because you were. Right. So I thought that was an amazing reality. And that's what I did. So when I went into the Marine Corps and I got through boot camp and I got all those things, when I tried to come back to college, classes had already started. They had been in classes for maybe two, three weeks. Okay. The registrar was trying to get me back in classes, but it was a lot of trying to reach out to adjuncts and things to try to see if they could get me in class and help me make up time. Right. It became very difficult, so I spoke to my um, my captain at the time, and he basically was able to allow me to sort of like be like an active reservist. Right. Uh, so I ended up doing that uh, since I wasn't able to go right back in. And I did that maybe for about another year or so. Right. Uh, then I ended up being able to go into college at LaGrange College in LaGrange, Georgia, uh -huh. where I went there to play college basketball and continue college. What did you major in? Uh, biology. That's right, okay. So I finished my bachelor's degree in biology mm -hmm. at LaGrange College. Uh -huh. uh, upon graduating college, I had two job offers. I uh, could have moved back and worked at the University of Maryland at the Institute of Human Virology, mm -hmm. uh, I guess as a research what? assistant. Institute of what? A virology. A urology? Virology. Virology, yes, okay. Uh, dealt with viruses and things of that nature. Got it. So, you know, I had a... Um, study that they allowed me to work on during my internship, uh, which was on um, Carposi sarcoma. Uh, it was a HIV related uh, study. Okay. Uh, so once I finished undergraduate, they offered me an opportunity to come back and be a, a, like a research assistant, but I ended up taking the opportunity to move to Miami uh, to work at uh, Mercy Hospital mm -hmm. down in Miami. Okay. And that's how I ended up in Miami oh, okay. back in July of 99. Okay, so you separated in Georgia? Yes, sir. Okay, and then you wound up taking a job in Miami? Yes, sir. Okay, and how long did you work down there? I uh, worked uh, in Miami at Mercy Hospital for, I guess, about a year, uh -huh. uh, but then I got an opportunity to leave, and once I left, I ended up working for Behavioral Health uh, organization. What organization? I uh, started working at, um, it was uh, the Lock Towns Community Mental Health Center. Uh -huh. So I started working there and I ended up starting to develop, that's the coffee maker. Uh, I started working there uh, doing HIV AIDS prevention programs. So I was the coordinator for that organization. Uh, so it was myself and other staff members that went out and did community service uh, presentations and uh -huh. did presentations at the jails and prisons uh, so that we could talk to other inmates and, and people about the importance of protection and things of that nature. Uh, while I was there, I actually ended up going back to, to college uh -huh. and I went back to start my master's degree and I started that in 2000. So I sort of went right pretty much into 
my graduate school after being here. And I finished my first master's degree in 2003, which was a master's of science in health management. Uh, and then during that time, of course, I was still working uh, and transitioned from there to uh, Family Health Center, uh, which Family Health Center is a community health uh, clinic center uh, in the city of Miami. Right. Uh, and I worked there and it was, it's actually it was called Economic Opportunity Family Health Center. It's uh -huh. called Jesse Trice Community Health Center now. Uh, but I worked there for like four years mm -hmm. uh, and I ended up uh, being the patient care coordinator there. Uh, and I developed programs and community uh, awareness programs for um, the community as well as patients who were actually living with substance abuse, mental health, as well as HIV AIDS. Okay. So I worked there for four years and then I went back to, to college again uh, because I got an opportunity to work for an organization called the Village South. Uh, it's a substance abuse mental health uh, facility that dealt uh, with residential patients. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I went there, and while I was there, I went back to graduate school uh, to finish a, another master's degree, where I finished my master's in business administration. So at this point, I finished a bachelor's and two master's degrees, and I was at Village South, and I was um, one of the, um, I guess, on the executive management team, right. where I helped support uh, families and transition programs or the adult services programs uh, where the Village South uh, developed the first evidence-based practice program uh, called the FIT program which was actually Families in Transition where they realized that in order to develop a real opportunity of success for patients that were going through those substance abuse and, and, and trauma issues it was most important to create um, therapy, therapeutic and intervention programs right. that would deal with the whole family. So the mother could actually come to treatment mm -hmm. and stay on the residential campus with them and however many kids they had. So right. we've been in a situation where we've been a mother with five, seven kids, you know, different things. But on this campus, we had an all-inclusive campus where we had a cafeteria, we had child care, uh, we had tutoring programs, and the therapist would provide therapeutic interventional services for not just the, the parents, but also for the children. And it was called a village because exactly that's what it was. Right. It was a village that was all about building uh, the overall unit of the family together. So because of the custody scenarios that we had uh, with uh, the relationship between the village and the courts. Mm -hmm. We had joint custody with the courts to help maintain for parents that might have been in positions to lose their their uh, parental rights to their children. Okay. So because of that, parents would have uh, um, um, what you want to call it, uh, view visitation. So people from children and family would come and they would monitor to see supervised supervise mm -hmm. visits. And, and over time, we were able to find a lot of ways to bring parents and children back together, uh, find ways to help parents and families uh, get off drugs and be able to help them find stable lifestyles so they could actually move ahead. Right. And uh, you know, I've seen uh, some people that I've known from there to go out and actually rebuild their whole life and have still maintained sobriety and, and have sustained a very successful life for themselves. Right. So that was uh, amazing. Did you have any problem while you were on active duty ever staying, did you ever have a problem staying in touch with your family? No, sir. Okay, cool. No, sir. Um, well, I'm, you worked in the food industry, so I know the food was great. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we, we prided ourselves on that. I mean, that was, Something that was amazing. Yes. Right. Um, did you have any problem, you know, did you have, always have all the supplies that you needed? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the, the, and you know, did you, sure do you feel like you, how did you, apparently you survived, so 
Pressure and stress. How did you deal with that? Well, uh, you're trained. You're okay. trained to right. develop the abilities to deal with pressure and stress. Uh, but beyond that, I, I truly uh, believe that not only due to the military training that we gain from being in the Marine Corps, but it's the level of unity that you build with that team. Right. Uh, and people are able to not only hold each other accountable, but to lift and hold each other up. Uh, so we were able to, you know, pretty much feel that we can make it through anything together. Right. Last couple of questions. Um, so, oh, you haven't talked about your, so after the job in Miami, what was your next career move? Well, over time, I transitioned away from healthcare, uh -huh. uh, and I transitioned into education. Okay. Uh, I was working for a medical device company. I was a clinical specialist. I traveled a lot, and I spoke to my director at the time and asked, would it be possible if I was able to teach uh, college as an adjunct? Uh, and this is back in 2009. Okay. And, uh, you know, his name was Scott Babcock, and he said, you know, Germany, that would be fine, you know, as long as it doesn't interfere with travel and work. Right. I said, yes, sir. So that's what I did. I applied, and I was able to get my first teaching job. Where? Uh, at San Ignacio College. In? In Miami. Doral. It's in the Miami area, but in Doral. Uh, and I started teaching health, wellness, biology uh, programs, and some business classes. Cool. Uh, I taught there from... 2009, 2010, until about 2015. Right. Uh, and while I was doing that, I also took an opportunity to teach uh, business classes at Broward College, uh, which I started there in like 2014. Okay. Uh, in the midst of doing those things, by the time I was working consistently uh, in higher ed, mm -hmm. One of my deans spoke to me and said that if I wanted to expand my abilities, uh, because he said that he felt that I was very good at communicating and, and leadership because of my background, that if I thought about being in higher ed administration, I needed to go back uh, and complete my doctorate degree. So in 2016, I went back to school to finish my doctorate uh, degree, which I finished my educational uh, doctorate in leadership and management, uh, and I finished that in 2020. Gotcha. Okay, so what did you do after that? Uh, I worked, ended up working full time uh, at a place called City College in the Miami area. Uh, the chief administrative officer over the campus, mm -hmm. uh, over all academic programs. Uh, so I was the assistant director of education and did that uh, until I end up leaving because of COVID. Okay. Uh, when COVID happened, a lot of things went online and programs started shifting. Uh, so they ended up trimming administration. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, my position phased. Uh, and they offered me an opportunity that if I was able to come back, uh, it was open. Uh, but at that time, I started working at different colleges teaching as an adjunct, so I didn't really need to go back. Mm -hmm. uh, because with the COVID thing and everyone online, a lot of positions were not available for full-time hire. Okay. Uh, but eventually, uh, I continued to work, and I ended up getting the great opportunity of working at Palm Beach State College, where I'm at now. Uh, and I'm there, and I'm the actual uh, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs uh, at Palm Beach College at the Boca campus, Boca Raton campus. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Now, only a couple questions. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Yes, sir. Uh, for me, I knew that my time in the Marine Corps uh, was, a, was dedicated to being here as someone to fight for my country. Uh, it was about service. Uh, and whatever it took, I would be a part of it. Uh, if it came to deployment uh, and war, I was definitely open to supporting that uh, because of my respect for my country 
and everything that I have gained being here in the U.S. all my life. Uh, because I felt that, to me, in order to really dedicate yourself to your country, uh, you have to have full buy-in. And to me, uh, giving service to my country uh, was essential uh, to what I thought was important in my life. Okay. How did your service and experiences affect your life? Uh, it actually helped basically develop my character mm -hmm. and helped give me a very, very well-rounded life. Uh, the Marine Corps shaped and helped define me in a, a number of ways. Uh, I had a lot of positives and a lot of drive in me, but the military, specifically the Marine Corps, helped develop and, you know, sort of set boundaries and developmental processes that allowed me to have better vision about the, the direction of how I would sort of live my life. And to this day, I've able, been able to utilize that structure to help pattern my career. And it has, uh, it has been a blessing and has allowed me to be very effective through mine. Um, have, have you had any negative incidences as far as any racism? Have you ever had any of those bad experiences? Yes, sir. I'm born and raised in Georgia. I was born in 72. <laughs> Uh, you know, I know racism if I know anything, um, but I was never taught to live by those values. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents always raised me to have respect for everyone, regardless of what color they were, and I live by that until this day, uh, and to always have great respect and yes sir, no ma'am, and no sir, and yes. those things I learned at home. Uh, it was just majorly reinforced in the Marine Corps. Okay. Uh, but uh, in the Marine Corps, we always talked about everyone was green, even though we knew the colors to each other. But it was all about ensuring that regardless of the color, when it came down to it, it was about us having each other's back and never leaving a man behind. Right. And at that point, it was more about us being a family and being about unity. Uh, because in the end, everyone believes the same. Right. And that was always what it was more about. And it was about having that love and respect for one another and ensuring that we all served uh, to the highest level that we could. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us that maybe we, did, we have not covered? Uh, well, I just want to thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, to express, you know, my appreciation uh, for my time in the military. Uh, to me, the Marine Corps was a valuable and still is a valuable part of my life uh, and what I have been able to accomplish. And I'm very thankful uh, for the military and I will always be appreciative of everything I've gained. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for this interview and I want to thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome.